a black PhD right now, driving down the street in Washington, D.C., with a billion dollars in the bank, five PhDs, he hear a squat car, and he squeezed the steering wheel tight. Nobody came to that. That's in his blood. And then when the car passed, he said, thank God, God had nothing to do. They wasn't after you in the first place. You have to look way into it, to it. I missed it all coming up. My mother, you know, gave me everything a child would want. See, when I was born, we didn't have welfare. Hmm? Everything a child would want for Christmas. And they told me a white man brought it to me. So we sit here, you and I, you're 81 years old. You've been a public person for most of that time. Yes. And you are not a liberated man? Not at all. No, you can't get liberated with money. That comes from hmm, inside. They convinced me that all black women are ugly. That's the, okay? They convinced black women that all black women are ugly. The only woman on the planet, a black American woman, go to a place called a beauty parlor. Hmm? All the rest of them hair salons. Beauty parlor. Hmm? They teach me something's wrong with my hair. My hair didn't come from Sears and Roebuck. It came from the same God that put the universe together. And yet you hear black folks say, oh, she got good hair, she got bad hair. God in the business of making something bad? But haven't, haven't we shaken some of that off? I don't hear people talk the way I did when I was a kid about good hair and bad hair. When I was born, they was changing a black, first per black person's dollar for 49 cents. Now they give me 98 cents. I don't want 98 cents for a dollar. I want a full dollar's change for a dollar. Or this cash register will never ring again. You know, you got, you got black folks so ashamed uh, of ride, they call it rebellion. It's not no damn rebellion. A rebellion ain't something you have after a cop shoots somebody. A rebellion is planned. <laughs> you know the day it's going to start. This is a ride. In Chicago in 1968, it was a police ride. They didn't say police rebellion. A black father, I had three boys. I never taught them to behave when you run across an ignorant, racist cop that might kill you. Why? Anytime you teach your child to treat filth nasty, then they think something wrong with them. That's the game. I've never taught my children you have to be twice as smart as white people. See, children don't hear what you mean, they hear what you say. And when you tell them they got to be twice as smart, in their mind, they think they dumb. That's how, that's how it works. None of what we've been talking about so far is very funny. Yet you were a comic for a long time yes. and using humor to try to get people to think about no, these no, no, contradictions. No, 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 mm -hmm. no, 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 don't do that to me. Oh, what were you doing? You tell me then. I would never believe you can change things through humor at all. I remember a New York Times reporter asked me in Chicago at a nightclub when I finished, how many of these white folk you think is laughing because they're guilty? You can ask them that. Being black, I know some black folks whiter than white folks are. You stop and think, you know. You make a living. America goes to war, they don't send no comics, hmm? They send some folks that did barely can read and write. What? When America decided they wanted to go to outer space, they didn't get some folk that love America. They got scientists, scientists. And if this thing is to change, it had to be signed. What have this done to your mind? I know who I'm dealing with. A white dude that his own wife, his mother, his daughter, his girlfriend didn't get the right to vote till 1921. If you do that to your mama, my mama better stay in the house. Legally, black folks had a right to vote before white women. Remember, I, I, I still think as a Negro, man, un, unshackled, unfree, you know, and I'm not going to let nobody make me a hero because they think I'm a hero. I live with me. I know who I am. I'll die. I'll die for it. But there's certain things I won't do, and that was the money piece. I mean, I made more money than, at that time than most people, just second only to Frank Sinatra. But I, I spent it for the movement. When they cut the food stamps off in Mississippi, I carried 70 tons of food there every two weeks. You make it sound straightforward and logical, but you walked away from the dough. You walked away from the applause. You walked away from whatever, the Ed Sullivan show and, and all yeah. that stuff. You made a choice. You had to at some point say, this is more important to me 
than all the good things no, you, that, that have been that. dished out. If you could feel your hair grow, you'd probably go crazy. Okay? <laughs> you know, so I had a big thorn, Rose Royce. I lost all of it. Who cares? You know, I grew. It was the movement that changed me. Okay, tell me how. Well, as a child, I went to the movie because I just realized the hand I've been dealt in the St. Louis ghetto, that can't come from God. Something wrong. You know, so I went to the movie and dream, man, dream, dream. I'd see uh, Clark Gable, long black hair, and every time he'd say something to him, he'd shake his hair and flip it back. I damn near broke my neck one night sitting at home trying to flip a nap back, <laughs> you know. And I said to me, long before I hit, that to be black in America and you hit big with a job or money, you owe yourself X amount of treats just to unmess up your mind. So that's what I did. Before I hit big, I said this, when I realized it was gonna be in entertainment, if I don't bring a woman into the nightclub, I'm not leaving with one, okay? That was, that was the law here. And, and so I had certain things set up before it happened. I wanna bring up optimistic children, but realistic children. Sure. So you don't wanna tell them the game's rigged and you already lost. Um, so I've tried to temper realism with a belief in the future. It's a tough thing to do. I try to temper that knowing what's in your head, knowing what's in your head, you know. You see, the one thing that President Obama should have taught black folks, you know, we were always told behave yourself, get a good education. He went to the school the white boys go to, never been to jail just as nice and kind, huh? They treat him as bad as they would treat a, a third grade dropout on death row waiting to be electrocuted. So that would say, don't believe what they're telling you, because it don't work. So don't play it straight? Don't walk the straight and narrow? Don't be Barack Obama? Is that the bottom line? No, I'm telling, I'm honest. You know, uh, all my children have been successful, very successful, because I told them the truth. Education ain't nothing. Huh? If you think there's a universal God that put the planet together and need a system who hate you to teach you something, then you're in trouble anyway. Now, I had a mother that couldn't come to my graduation because she didn't think her clothes was right and she didn't want to embarrass me. That's that feeling. And lastly, let me say this here. No group of people have ever been negatively go through what we go through and them same white folks pick us to feed them take care of their children, they see something in me.